in the Island Cove Marina and Manafort Brothers car, Corey DeMatteo. Six starter, he won last week. He's a big dog, Devin O'Connell, car number 43 from Madison, Connecticut. Making his Stafford debut in car number 11 from Califon, New Jersey, here's Brad Lobaster. From Westbrook, Connecticut, Cole Casagrande with car number 09. Here is a young lion in car number 24 in the Hamden Engineering car, Mikey Flynn. Here's a popular driver from Shelton, Connecticut, Andrew Mueller with the number 35 car. A young lion in car number 12, Joey Graff Jr. And Dana DiMatteo, car number 76, start scratch. We are green and racing. We remind you that our contingency partners for this division include... David's Flea Market taking place this Sunday, the third Sunday of the month here at Stafford. Out in front, Chris Fuller looking very racy, Matt. Oh, it trouble for O'Connell as he was hit by Hodgson, and he winds up on the grass. Look at the 16 car. Applying the pressure, Jordan Lamoth is all over Chris Fuller as the caution flag comes out as the 43 of Devin O'Connell gets fired up. What a difference a week can make, Matt. Yeah, there was some hectic action because first there was contact between the 43 and the 16 car, and then when the dust settled from that, there was contact again, and this time the 28 of Teddy Hodgson, a rookie driver, was involved. Remember, the top finisher in each of our divisions in the Legend cars will be getting a $25 contingency bonus from Dave's Flea Market. So that's something that all these drivers are aware of. They sure are. And we remind you that Dave's Flea Market is going to be taking place this Sunday right here on the grounds of the Stafford Motor Speedway. Perfect weather for flea markets. The best deals come in the fall. Come see me. I'll be there looking for a deal. <laughs> and I love flea markets and I love deals. Not necessarily in that order. That's right. But we are uh, having Christopher Fuller up at the front, and we pointed out during the heat race that Chris Fuller has really got the hang of this tough track, and he is running much more competitively than he was at the beginning of the year, but he has a tough task here because next door will be Jordan Lamoth as we come back up to speed. Off the turn. Chris Fuller gets the bite again. Here comes Lamoth going to the outside. Fuller guards the inside lane, and he's pretty impressive as Ted Hodgson is making his presence known as well. And look at Brad LeMaster. First outing here, he's coming to the front two mats. Trouble for the 75 of Corey Casagrande as he got shuffled backwards. Now he is on the move. We have a fight for the lead between Christopher Fuller in the white 15 and the red number 16 of Jordan LeBoff. Turn number two is where a lot of stuff happens, but LeBoff can't get underneath the 15 car. Now the DiMatteo brothers are starting to make their presence known. Corey DiMatteo is settled into the fourth spot. Bid for the lead. Chris Fuller leaves the door open. Lamoth moves to the bottom, and Lamoth will take down the lead. So a strong move by the young lion. Now Corey DiMatteo, he's got that car cranked up as he is able to get by Lowmaster in car number 11, and Corey D is into the top three. Corey D moves into the third spot. A battle is side-by-side -side racing for the fourth spot between Brad Lamaster and right there with him and challenging throughout this event has been Ted Hodgson with that number 28 car. Then it's two of the big dogs. Dana DiMatteo, the 76. Trouble for Flynn. 24 goes around in the quarter. Six laps are up on the board in this 20-lap feature event. And the caution flag comes out. And it is Cora, uh, Mikey Flynn in disarray there. In turn number four, rookie driver. Last year he raced not only here at Stafford in the Wild Thing Carts, but also at Pomfret. And a lot of his pals from last year have come every Friday night to watch him in action. He gets it fired back up and picks up at the rear of the field. Two leaders so far in six circuits. Chris Fuller was the original leader of the event. Then Lamoth made a bold move to take over the lead with an inside move off turn number four. DiMatteo brothers, the cream is rising to the top. Corey DiMatteo inside of the second row. And then it's Ted Hodgden out of Danbury in the fourth spot. And then the 76 of Dana DiMatteo. He started dead last. And he hasn't had much luck at all in recent weeks, Matt. What's it going to be as we go back to green? 
Well, getting the luck of the draw was Jordan Lamoth as he is able to smoke bomb his way into the lead. Corey DeMatteo gets underneath Christopher Fuller. He's in second. And look at Dana come to life. Car number 76. We have a battle between the brothers for second and third. It certainly is side-by-side -side racing there. And all of a sudden, the 43 that spun earlier, Devin O'Connell that won last week has moved into the third spot. Devin O'Connell up on the wheel. Bottom shot move down beneath Corey DiMatteo, and he will move into second. Car 43 is on a mission, Matt, and he's already up to second, but Lamoth is still trying to maintain and pull away in that lead spot. Earlier this summer, Devin came very close to winning the summer shootout in Charlotte. Right now, he's gotten by Corey DiMatteo. He's gotten by Data, and now is on the bullseye. Belongs to the 16 of Jordan Lamoth. Lamoth still dominating as we approach the halfway point of the race. Half of the event is all but history. Lamoth has been the strongest car in the first half, but the second half is where it's going to come to the wire. Good battle between the DiMatteo brothers side by side. Dana with that 76, he started in the 12th position, is now up to the third spot. Corey DiMatteo back in the fourth spot. Lamont's commanding lead is starting to dwindle, but remember, that 43 of Devin O'Connell started six, but had to come from the back when it brought out a caution, and here is the second caution of the event. So we have a problem for Cassandra Cole, as she is on the back stretch pointed in the wrong direction. Cassandra, 17 years old. She is a junior at Westbrook High School. She's an old dirt bike racer, and she decided to sell all her dirt equipment, take a year off, and then come back in the Legends Division, a pretty good athlete. And there is a driver, her tutor, uh, by the name of George Whitney, who has helped a lot of drivers in the Legend classification, not only in Connecticut, but all over the country. So uh, Cassandra is really making progress in her rookie season. And one of the reasons is that uh, she has a pretty good supervisor in George Whitney. Well, a little bit of a push gets it fired back up. 11 of 20 are into the record books. First feature event of the night brought to you in part by Dave's Flea Market coming up this Sunday right here in the grounds of the Stafford Motor Speedway. Should be the biggest flea market of the season here. And we want you to be here. Clean off that attic or garage. Space is still available. Or come and wheel and deal like I'm going to. Yeah, buy some stuff and mess up that attic or garage. That's right. Green flag is back out. Boy, there's no messing with Jordan Lamoth right now as he tries to get the lead. He's going to have to be on top of his game because look at Devin O'Connell on the outside. Trouble now. We've got another spin. Chris Fuller goes around after turning some heads in the beginning of this event. And the 24 stopped to avoid the situation. So Jordan Lamoth got a pretty good getaway on the restart, but then Devin O'Connell came strong on the outside. Devin, most of his experience is in the Allison Legacy division, and he just branched out into Legends this season. It all started for him, though, right here at Stafford in the Wild Thing carts on Monday nights. Sure did. Let's go to Tony Sutton, who has a quick report. A great charge through the field uh, for Devin O'Connell. And one thing he also told me earlier is that he plans on entering the Legend cars here at Stafford full-time next season. So... Hey, it's been an impressive two races so far for him. Who knows what he's going to be like in the points race next year. Well, that was Connor Sullivan out of Simsbury, Connecticut, our fourth member of our broadcast team. We appreciate that report, Connor. You know, the Legends, it's a national division. The national championships are being held in October. And this year, well, they decided to rough it and have their national championships at a place where nobody wants to go. Las Vegas. So that's where the national championships will be uh, conducted this year. Well, it looks like we've got to double back up. Get ready. It's showtime as they come off turn number four. Tim Bennett gives him the green, and the guy that suffered the big loss there is oh, Devin O'Connell. in trouble. That is the same place he originally went around in the early laps of this event. And it looks like... The caution is not going to come out, apparently. 
Well, we finished that lap, and Jordan Lamoth is leading, and now he has to worry about Dana DiMatteo. Certainly does, and the DiMatteo brothers run second and third. Good run being turned in by Ted Hodgson with that number 28 car up to the fourth position. And that car, number 24, you pointed it out before, is also coming back to the front. Yeah, he was involved in an altercation. Now he is challenging Teddy Hodgson for the fourth place. Right behind them is Graf. Things are about to get interesting with five laps to go because Jordan LaMoth is going to get a challenge from Dana DiMatteo. Dana DiMatteo started last in this event. He has passed more cars than anyone, but he's got one more car to make it official if he's going to win this feature event. He has been in the wrong place at the wrong time the last couple Friday nights. Hopefully, he'll be able to hold on and to be a contender in the final laps. Four circuits remain for these, the legend cars, and Gordon Lamoth is still the leader of the pack. And it's a two-car battle between Lamoth and Dana DiMatteo with Corey dropping back. And the 43 of O'Connell. He is out of the race, so it is up to Dana DiMatteo to try to put a scare into Jordan Lamoth. We are down to the final pair of laps. He's closed up the gap, but will it be enough to become a factor? Gordon, Jordan Lamoth started in the second spot, took over the lead from Christopher Fuller. Trouble now, 24 goes around, and this could change the entire complexion of this event. Well, is it too early to say it? No, it's not. Get ready for the three most exciting words in motorsports. Green, Green white, white checker. checker. And these are really going to be exciting if your name is Jordan LaMoth because he is going to have to hold off the point leader. So car number 15 just pulled back to the paddock area. We believe a tire was rubbing there on that car, once the early leader. 18, Tim Bennett looking him over on the starter stand. Lamoth and Dana DiMatteo started back in 12th, DiMatteo. But Corey DiMatteo is not on the track. Remember, he was second in the points, 20 behind his brother. So this could be a good news for Dana as he could come very close to wrapping up a title. Off the turn, get ready. Green is out, side-by-side -side racing for the lead. Lamoth takes it over. Bottom of turn two, DiMatteo tries a different line, and all of a sudden that 28 car, Matt, is a factor for Ted Hodgden. His best race of the season. He's trying to get second away from Dana DiMatteo. Graf in fourth. Andrew Moeller doing a great job in fifth. We are on the white flag lap. Here comes Lamoth into turn three. Down to the stripe. Lamoth will take down the victory if he can hold on, and he does. Finishing in second, DiMatteo. Theodore Hodgson will round out the top three. Joey Graff will finish in the fourth spot. Good run for Andrew Moeller to finish in position five. Then it was Mikey Flynn in six, Alex McCollum in the coupe in seventh, Cassandra Cole eighth, Corey DiMatteo finishes ninth, so he is still alive for the championship, but his brother will have a pretty big lead of about 36 points heading into the Napa Auto Parts fall final. And Christopher Fuller was 10th, Devin O'Connell 11th, and Brad Lowmaster 12th. So let's check out the bonus money, courtesy of Dave's Flea Market. The top young lion was Jordan LaMoth. He will get $25. The top semi-pro, and that's also worth $25. And I believe that will be... The 09 of Cassandra Cole. We will uh, check on that, but it looks like Cassandra Cole might have got that 25 and the $25 for the top pro was Dana DiMatteo. All that extra money, courtesy of Dave's Flea Market. And that's all taking place at Dave's Flea Market this Sunday here at the Stafford Motor Speedway. Unofficially, up by 36, Dama DiMatteo over Corey DiMatteo and Lamoth with 442 is uh, your third place car. Now let's go down to Napa Victory Lane. Connor Sullivan is there with our winners. First Stafford Windmill Legend car for Jordan Lamoth. You had to hold off two of the best tonight, including our points leader. Take us through it. Uh, you know, I don't know. I'm, 
I'm speechless. Uh, I've never won an electric car before. Uh, it feels great. Can't thank Dana enough. He uh, drilled me real clean. Uh, thought for sure he would have had me, but I don't know. Who would you like to thank for getting you to Napa Victory Lane tonight? Uh, I just have to thank my mom. My, mo my mom works endless hours, and uh, she pays for this. Uh, my dad, he works his butt off on this. Uh, overhead door, um, MAC Designs, um, and everyone that came out to support. All right, that's the story for our winner tonight, Jordan Lamont, first ever win in a legend car as we'll move it on over to our second place finisher and points leader, Dana DiMatteo. Looked like you had a second chance to go after the win, but looks like he was just a little too fast for you. Uh, yeah, I definitely think we had a car to compete for the win like we had, but um, just didn't have what we usually have center off here. Uh, gonna have to work on that for next week. Um, but all in all, it was a really good race. Really happy with the car. Congrats to Jordan, it's much well deserved. He's been really hungry for a win here this year and uh, it's good to see him finally get it. Who would you like to thank for your podium run tonight? I just gotta thank Jags and Jason Palmer. They help so much uh, technology-wise on these cars. Uh, my Uncle John, my dad, uh, my brother, uh, my mom for filming every week, my girlfriend for coming out. Uh, just everyone jumps on board every week. All right, that's the story for our second place finisher. He extends his points lead going into the fall final as we'll bring in our third place finisher, Teddy Hodgson. You're getting good at these podium finishes. Yeah, I mean, the car wasn't the best that we've had, but we kept hanging in there and we did the best I can. Who would you like to thank for your run tonight? Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Champion Spark Plugs. They've been helping me all the way through. Uh, McCorb Ruins, 510 Kyle Beatty, uh, Ness Auto, State Cutters, everybody else, family, friends I'm here today. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, that's it for the Legend Cars. Again, Jordan Lamont, your first, his first career win. take a look at the points Matt for our field before we go to green flag racing. Dwayne Provost has the advantage as he is leading the points by 22 over Dwayne Provost. So those are the two drivers who have the best shot of winning championships and uh, we saw Dwayne Provost have some difficulties a week ago and he was able to get a pretty good finish. Austin Bissett third, 52 points off the pace. Norm Sears is fourth, 66 back. Then it's David Arut and Albert Saunders. Justin Bren is the final driver who is mathematically alive. He is 96 points off the pace in seventh place. Lights are off on the safety vehicle provided by Wheel and Engineering, sponsor of the NASCAR Wheel and All American Series and the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. The fall final is our next event here at the Stafford Motor Speedway presented by Napa Auto Parts. It could be a crucial uh, factor in the championship for the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour with champions to be crowned in all six of the weekly divisions, a pit party, and much, much more. Off turn number four. Cam gives him the double greens. Textbook start. Barkowski wastes no time at all as car number seven quickly takes over the number one spot. Well, he has been capable of making moves like that all season long. Second is a battle. Paul Arut is on the inside, and he is being challenged by Norm Sears in car number 36. But Paul Arut is able to handle the situation as they cross the line. David Arut now muscles his way into the third spot down underneath Sears. Side by side racing there. Then the Saunders twins are there along with Austin Bassett Hayes and Provost. The cream is starting to rise to the top. Hayes a lot quicker than he was in qualifying. As right now he is hugging the back bumper of Austin Bissett. And it's a pretty good lead by Glenn Barkowski trying to win a limited late model feature for the first time. Side by side racing in the battle for the fourth and fifth spot. David Arute has moved into the third position. Up the hill and challenging his Sears. Here comes the four car, and that is Cliff Saunders making his presence known now in the fourth position. Sears and Bissett having a pretty good battle for fifth, and right now it's Bissett 
who is able to take off and get that position. It leaves a crevice for Andrew Hayes, and Andrew Hayes has rocketed his way into the top six. While all that's been happening, Paul Arute is closing up the gap on Barkowski. David Arute is following his brother to the front of the class. Meanwhile, further back, side-by-side -side racing, Sears is slightly off the pace, as now Provost will pick up a spot there. Here comes Bren with car number 66 at the battle of for the bottom of the top 10. And he is trying to fight it out with Albert Hayes. Paula Root says it's been a very slow process. In the beginning, it was just finishing races. That was his number one priority. Now he is contending for a win as he is following Glenn Barkowski, but he also has to worry about David Arute, who is in close proximity to the number 82 car. Meanwhile, Paul Arute has closed up that gap, side-by-side -side racing in a battle for the fourth and the fifth spot as Austin Bissett and Saunders are wheel-to-wheel -wheel and side-by-side. Orange car 64 now moves into the fourth spot. Here comes Hayes, front runner in the points, Matt. He's up to position number five. Boy, wherever Bissett goes, Hayes is following him. And that's how Hayes has weaved his way into the top five. The leader continues to be Glenn Barkowski, and he has a pretty sturdy lead over the Aru brothers. Paul in second, and David running third. Fastest car on the racetrack, Dwayne Provost, 22-123. Down the back straightaway. It is still Barkowski, but Paul Arute is able to reel him in as they come off turn number four. Top five cars, nose to tail. Only one stepping out of the line is Hayes with car number nine. And he is ready to make a move on the set. That is for fourth. They are dead even. They exit the turn, and the man with the speed is Andrew Hayes. He is now a top four car. Here comes David Arute to try to take second away from Paul. They are wheel to wheel and side by side. Give position number two to car number 28. David Arute has moved into second. Paul Arute is now being pressured by Hayes. They go to the bottom of turn one. Side by side bid for third. Hayes, the current point leader, and Paul Arute. Throw a little Austin Bissett in the mix, and the battle is on for third. Pretty impressive run by Andrew Hayes as he has fought all the way to third place. And following him is the orange of Austin Bissett. Now Dwayne Provost has moved into the top five. Remember, he trails Andrew Hayes by 22 points in the standings. Remember, there's less than 10 circuits remaining in this event. David Arut, among the quickest cars on the racetrack, reels in on Barkowski. Barkowski has led all 10 circuits. Now make it 11 as they head back to turn one. The lead is starting to shrink, however as David Arute is coming on strongly as they race their way into turn number three. It is Trouble now. Off the turn. We've got a spin. It looks like Sears is involved. Jesse Hines, one of the cars who uh, slowed up, I think, to uh, avoid serious contact. And there's a car stuck in the middle. And I think that's the Paul Arute machine is the third car involved in that mix-up. Hines is able to drive away. Paula Root is able to drive away, and it looks like Sears might be able to do the same. So minor situation with 11 of 20 complete. Barkowski's commanding lead is gone, Matt. And I don't think he is a fan of this caution. He would have preferred for the race to stay green, but now he is going to have to prove himself again in a double-file restart against David Arute. Remember, at the start of the race, he got to jump on Paul in the 82 car. It was able to get a pretty plush lead until the yellow flag eliminated it. Sure was. And uh, again, it looks like they're the family Ford of Enfield safety services crew checking out the racing surface. If you're in the market for a new or used vehicle, it's family Ford of Enfield. They're located not far from the Stafford Motor Speedway. Make sure you tell them that you heard about it right here at the track and you'll get a special discount on your next purchase, either new or used. Remember tomorrow, if you live in the Enfield area, in Enfield, Stafford, Suffield, Granby, East Granby, Windsor Locks, East Windsor, any of those towns, you'll be uh, able to see short track racing from Stafford Motor Speedway, two o'clock tomorrow on Channel 15. And that will be uh, some great action as we have had an outstanding season. One of the most exciting seasons 
I think I could ever remember here at Stafford. So uh, tomorrow at 2 o'clock, it'll be short track racing at Stafford Motor Speedway as you will be able to relive all the action again. That's if you live in Enfield and the surrounding towns, you will be able to see it tomorrow. Down on Pitt Road, Norm Sears' bad luck continues as his car starts stranded, so the damage must have been a little bit more severe on car number 36. Chuck Zantarski, former late model champion, center stage on the Napa Auto Care Center, podium there, overseeing the operation. Tommy Fox, race director from Race Central, and a group of other award-winning NASCAR officials set the stage to make sure that everything is A-OK. -okay. Let's see what's going to happen as we're about ready to go back to green. Barkowski on the inside of David Arut. Barkowski again gets a good bite. And David Arut changes his strategy. Goes from the high side to the inside lane. Good racing there. They touch down the back straight away. Here comes Austin Bissett along with Hayes, Matt. But Barkowski isn't giving an inch in this one. He still brings him back to the line. This restart might have revitalized Austin Bissett as he is trying to take second away from David Arute as they swing off turn number one. Bissett getting some momentum from the high banking, and Bissett is nudging his way into second place. Deep into turn number three, they are side by side for second. Bissett on the top side, David Arut on the inside. Wheel to wheel, they come back to the line. It's still David Arut to hold on for second. Hayes has quietly but cautiously come to the front of the field. He'll start to work over Austin Bissett for the third spot as David Arute pulls back in a second. He has an alley underneath the 64 car, so Andrew Hayes, a point leader, very cautious, almost getting loose was Bissett as that car started to swing back and forth, and Hayes is able to get the third. Here comes Provost trying to get to number four. It is Provost who doesn't want to let Hayes far out of his sight. He knows he's still got a mathematical shot at the title. Down the back straight away. Barkowski still being hunted by David Arute. They're nose to tail. They come off the turn. Arute looks for daylight. Further back, Provost and Bissett are side by side and throw the Saunders twins into the mix in a battle for fifth. What a story this would be if Glenn Barkowski can hold off David Arute down the stretch. Also giving Trouble. chase. We have problems in turn two as getting kicked around is Joe Nojic getting locked up with R.J. Surdell and Austin Bassett is also involved. Austin Bassett's car, something went awry with that race car. You pointed it out, Matt, as he went to the top side and then all of a sudden the car loosened up terrible yes. and the end result was him going around in turn two. And I don't remember the last time we've seen Bassett go around by himself like that. No, I, mean, I can't remember the last time he got loose in a quarter. He's usually pretty solid exiting turn number four, but you saw the car get a little jittery coming off the quarter, and it cost him in turn number two. So the 64 will have to go to the rear of the field. Joe Nojic, it looked like he suffered some damage to the right front of that car. He will go to the rear. We have one car already out, Norm Sear in car number 36, and Glenn Barkowski is going to have to prove himself on another double file restart. And you know the old cliche, you're only as good as your last restart. Glenn Barkowski was pretty good on the last one, and he is going to have to do it again against David Arute. I think David Arute wants to get to the bottom as quickly as he can to try to go underneath this seven. That was at least a strategy on the last restart, and we'll see if it comes through again. Well, there are five circuits remaining in this 20 lap event. The story is not only the battle up front for the lead, but the battle for the points. As Hayes and Provost, they have been swinging throughout this event and not letting either one of those two competitors get out of each other's sight. Let's see what's going to happen. Barkowski has been very strong on the restart. Last restart, David Arut went from the outside to the inside. The question is, will he use the same strategy here or will he try to go for it in the upper groove? Trouble for Arut did not come up to speed and he gets ran from behind by Dwayne Provost. Heartbreaker for David Arut. Gathers it back, moves into the fourth spot. Here comes Hayes all over Barkowski. Down the back straightaway. Good racing action there up front. Here comes Hayes running in the tire tracks of Barkowski, Matt, as they work their way off four. 
And Cliff Saunders was able to move up to third. We have not talked much about Saunders, but he is running a strong third, one notch ahead of David Aru. As they rifle their way off the corner, Glenn Barkowski. He knows he is going to get a challenge from Andrew Hayes, looking for his third win of the season. But Barkowski still has the lead with three laps to go. He brings it off turn number four. Perfect line down to the bottom of turn one. Hayes will look to the outside, up into the third spot. It is the number four of Cliff Saunders. David Arut back and contending among the top four cars. This time, when they come to the stripe, two lap marker will be given. One mile left. Barkowski has hit his marks every time. Can he do it for two more circuits? He's trying to hit the bullseye now, but right behind him is Andrew Hayes. Glenn Barkowski, less than two laps away from the biggest moment of his racing career. Andrew Hayes still has a lot to say about it, and you can't neglect the four of Cliff Saunders. They come off turn number four. Barkowski getting elbowed from behind by Hayes on the white flag lap. Final circuit down to the bottom of turn one. Barkowski still the leader. Hayes looking for the Achilles heel. Saunders is right there, down the back straight away. Hayes. Thinks twice of it. Peeks to the inside. Doesn't happen. Barkowski's driven a flawless race. Less than a turn. Barkowski will take down the victory as he will cross the stripe first. Finishing in the runner-up position is Andrew Hayes. Cliff Saunders to finish in the third spot. And a great comeback for David Arute to finish in four. Then Dwayne Provost in fifth. Albert Sanders sixth. Jesse Hyde seventh. Austin Bissett eighth. And Justin Brand ninth. In 10th is Paul Arute, Joe Dojic 11th, R.J. Surnell in 12th, and Norm Sears will be in 13th. Let's check out the point standings. Andrew Hayes picking up six unofficially, uh, Dwayne Provost. So that means the lead will go to 28, and all depending on the car count for the fall final, Andrew Hayes, even though it's not official, he is very close to being the limited late model champion for 2014. But the spotlight tonight belongs to the guy pulling a Napa victory lane right now. His first ever win. This is the best season he has ever had. Didn't really have the finishes bed to show for it. I think he had a win tonight to prove to everybody that he has had a great year and he has been one of the best cars week in and week out. He certainly has. And he said the last time he visited the podium that he was just shy of that victory, but he thought he was going to secure it before the 2014 season would come to an end. Down to Napa Victory Lane, we'll be meeting our top three staged, well, coming up next, the Junior Stars of NASCAR, the SK Light Modified Feature Event. But before we go there, ladies and gentlemen, let's go down to Napa Victory Lane and meet our very ecstatic winner. Barkowski's out of the car. <clears throat> What a dominant drive in this division. I'll tell you what, there's a lot of fast guys out there, but you showed them the way home. Yeah, we've been getting a lot better the last couple of weeks. We've really made some improvements on the car. Um, like I said last week when we finished third, um, I had the best crew in the pit area. I got Art Salvi, my crew chief, Tim West, Ken, Wendy. Uh, I got to thank Barry from Fluckinger Chassis, Donnie Wood for all the power. Um, there's a lot of guys from work here. I, I got to thank my father. My father's been supporting me for all these years that I've been coming doing here. This is a very rewarding, couldn't do it without all of them. Well, Glenn Bartowski, congratulations on a win. A great drive, dominant. I bet you a lot of people watching the back of your car saying, I got to figure out what he did. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Well, you ran hard and you got up to second spot, but uh, uh, he was like the dominant guy tonight at this racetrack. Yeah, you know, I guess we just didn't have enough time. I'm pretty sure we were the car to beat out there. I just didn't want to use the bumper too much there in the last couple laps. But congratulations to him. He well-deserved win. Uh, I got to thank my whole crew. Uh, it's Nuntuck Community College, uh, Local 3059, On Point Connection, Signorama, uh, my brother, my mom, my stepdad, my friend Chris, uh, everyone that helps out in the car. Just a big help. And also, you collected a few more points tonight than... Uh, uh, it looks like you're going to have to work hard, but not quite as hard as a lot of other drivers for the championship at the fall final. Yeah, we'll see what happens. You just got to finish, and that's it. That's all we got to do is finish the race. Andrew Hayes, congratulations on second. Thank you. Well, Cliff Saunders brought that green number four. 
up into third spot. For a while there, it looked like you were going to be trapped in the back, but you managed to snake your way through the traffic. A nice drive for third spot. Yeah, thanks. Uh, the race went pretty good for us. Uh, uh, you know, it was kind of up and down, but we you know, pulled through with a third place in the end. Uh, really got to thank Barry Falkinger for working on my car this week and helped me get it fixed because I wrecked the car last week. And, uh, you know, for all the setup help he's given me this year. The car was really good tonight. Uh, really good to see Glenn get his first win. That's really cool for him. I uh, just got to thank everyone who helped me out. American Sleeve, Barry B. Amusio, Rad Auto Machine, Fucker Derice Chassis, uh, Rob Davis, my mom, uh, Johnson Memorial Medical Center, Tom and John Butler, the whole team, everyone who helped me out. Cliff Saunders, congratulations. Third place, podium finish. Getting near the end of the year. Every point counts. Yeah, thanks. Thanks.